uh, A3 Mark III Golf, rear wheel bearing noise, uh, drum brakes. I'm not sure if you can hear that. It's pretty noisy. Nice thing about these, you can take the wheel off with the drum. I can save a bit of time. Last one I did was maybe over five years ago. Once the cotter pin is, is out of the way, you can remove the castellated nut here. Or lock washer. And you can remove the nut. It should come off now. Uh, if it doesn't, then you have to push the self adjuster up. At this point, you can inspect the brakes. Uh, now is a good time to do the brakes uh, if it needs it. These ones are looking good. No wetness here. You can lift the boot up to make sure. Wipe off the old grease from the stub axle or the spindle, whatever you want to call it. Remove the seal, inner bearing. That's the noisy one. You can see all the, the grit in here. Wipe out all the old grease. Use a tapered pin punch to punch out the races. There are three spots or three cutouts in the drum that allow access for the pin punch. Shouldn't take much pressure to punch it out. You can see the uh, cutouts now. There's one, two, and three. Same thing for the bigger inner race. And continue with cleaning. If you'd rather remove the drum uh, to clean it on the bench or as parts washer, washer, that's fine. Just remove the four lug bolts.
Okay, then you use your bearing installation kit or your taper, your inner race installation kit. And just tap it until you hear the uh, change in pitch. Same thing for the outer one. Take your new bearing, stick it in the uh, press, and then you just press down. And just press it down until grease comes up the middle. And grease will go up the middle here, and the bearing is packed. Just work the grease around. Same thing for the small guy. Work the grease around just like the other one, and then you're almost ready to install it. Pack the inside of the drum with grease. Take the new seal, tap it into place. Doesn't take, doesn't take a lot of uh, pressure. I always put a bit of grease in behind the seal manually like this. Don't worry about the uh, two different colors of grease here. Okay, you know. So you want to pack the channel full of grease. That one looks good. A little, a little more here. So it's nicely even packed all the way around. And I'll lubricate the uh, spline or the spindle. And then you just lift it back into place or set it back into place. Flip the bearing in. You want to wash the washer 
and the nut. Set the washer into place. And then you want to tighten the nut until you can move the uh, until you can still move the washer just a little bit. So the way I, that I do it is I spin the wheel that gets the bearings moving and then I just snug up the nut. I snug it up till it stops, then I loosen it a bit and then I snug it again. And now I check to see if the washer, if I can still move the washer. And you can see it moves slightly to the right, moves slightly to the left, and it's more of a feel. So if, if I go too tight, See, it doesn't move. So just a little bit back. Now I can still move the washer. And that's all it needs. You don't want to go too tight. The new castle related lock washer, whatever you want to call it. New cotter pin. Uh, usually the hole lines up. If not, you just rotate the washer. At, at worst case, you might have to move the nut. But you just want to uh, line up the hole here. Then you can put the uh, cotter pin down in there. And then uh, spread the legs. Tap them up. You could also obviously check for free play here just by wiggling the wheel. A little bit of free play is what you want to feel. If you don't feel anything, that's okay as long as the washer, uh, you can move the washer still. Then you tap the bearing cover back into place. I use an old inner race from a wheel bearing. It sits on the, uh, the ridge here. You just tap it into place like this. If it'll go. Just give it a rotate to make sure it's sitting nice and flush. And that's it. I go one step further by putting a bead of silicone along the ridge here. Just so that I can identify which or the fact that it's a wheel bearing that I was that I replaced and just spread the silicone across that ridge and it just ensures against moisture also getting in any type of water or whatever and I got a piece of dried silicone here so you can see there's a nice nice flat surface so nice flat film of silicone that can uh, help prevent water from intruding. But as long as the cap is sitting correct, there should be no need or to worry about water intrusion. So that's it. Nice and quiet again. Thanks for watching.